What's up guys, Dr. Daniel Ricciardi here with another video. In this one today, I'm gonna to talk about the three different types of SIBO, which are hydrogen dominant, methane dominant, and then there's a new third type that hasn't been researched as much. It's the hydrogen sulfide SIBO. Let's go. The first type of SIBO that I'm gonna talk about is hydrogen dominant SIBO. So this type of SIBO is caused by bacteria. When sugars and carbohydrates are eaten and they reach the intestines, these bacteria then ferment these sugar and carbs and turn that into hydrogen gas. This hydrogen gas is not a natural product, not a natural gas that's found in the human body. So if it's there in excess, that's where a lot of the bloating and gas symptoms will come from. Remember with this type of SIBO, food is passing too quickly through your digestive tract. So you can get malabsorption of nutrients and oftentimes some unintentional weight loss is associated. And now for treatments, uh, so if traditional antibiotics such as Zyfaxin, Neomycin, Metronidazole are going to be used, they seem to work best with this particular type of SIBO. Besides traditional antibiotic therapy, there's also anti-herbal, antimicrobial therapy which actually proved to be slightly superior than antibiotic therapy in a study that reviewed its treatment for SIBO. Uh, next one up we're gonna talk about is methane dominant, also called IMO or intestinal methanogen overgrowth. This type of SIBO is not caused actually by bacteria. They're actually by a different type of one cell organism called archaea, A-R-C-H-A-E-A. This is a relevant fact because if we're trying to treat something with an antibiotic and it's not a bacteria, it's not going to work. And then how does methane gas actually become formed? So if you remember previously, the bacteria, when they ferment carbohydrates, they give off the hydrogen gas. These archaea bacteria take that hydrogen gas along with carbon dioxide and they form the methane gas. The symptoms that can be caused by methane dominant SIBO are chronic constipation, which is more likely to happen. And in addition to that, weight gain and body fat increases. And then in terms of treatment, most evidence shows that antibiotics such as rifaximin um, aren't gonna be what you're gonna wanna use for these because they're not actually bacteria. Rifaximin is also indicated only for like irritable bowel syndrome, uh, the diarrhea subtype. So having a type of intestinal illness such as this one, which is more constipation, uh, it's really not gonna be something you're probably gonna want to do. So the anti-herbal um, antimicrobials or the elemental diet will likely be a better options for treating this type of SIBO. That wraps up everything for the methane dominant SIBO. And now onto the third type is hydrogen sulfide SIBO. Hydrogen sulfide gas is actually a gas that's produced normally in the human body, which is different than the hydrogen or methane. However, too much of this gas is actually shown to cause a lot of inflammation, be a neurotoxin and kind of prevent your cells from functioning to the best of their abilities. There's also evidence that links the increase of hydrogen sulfide gas to ulcerative colitis and other colon conditions. As far as symptoms go, you can have either constipation or diarrhea. However, diarrhea is way more prevalent with this type of SIBO. Besides this, uh, smelly flatulence, which smell like rotten eggs due to the sulfur, Abdominal pains can have tingling hands and feet due to its potential neurotoxicity. Now, in terms of the treatment of hydrogen sulfide SIBO, this is still a hotly debated issue. As of right now, a lot of the treatment options seem to be similar to the same ones for the hydrogen dominant SIBO, which were the antibiotics such as rifaximin and the antimicrobial herbs. In addition to that, there was another treatment I just wanted to throw out in here. There seems to be some potentially strong evidence uh, for its use in the future, although more studies are probably needed to look at it, but it was bith bismuth salicylate. It actually sounds familiar to you. It's probably because it's the active ingredient in regular old Pepto-Bismol. In terms of diagnosis, there is a new test that's coming out or came out. It's called the TRIO SMART test. And this actually checks for all three types of SIBO, uh, gas for hydrogen, methane, and hydrogen sulfide. Thank you for watching. This does conclude the video. I try to keep it as brief as possible and just give a very simple intro to these three different types of SIBO. Uh, if you did like the video, please like and subscribe. If you have questions or comments, please leave them below and tune in next week for a video. I post one every Monday at 6 p.m. Central Time. Thank you very much. Have a good day.